from the Fox 5 studios. This is the Red Zone Sports Show. Snap it with 11. Rayala roll out. Deep shots. Gets there. The Jesus. Touchdown Rebels. The energy in the building. Um, I'm so thankful for that. And we can turn this into a huge home field advantage for us, for our team, for our city. Uh, that, that's our mission. That's what we're going to get done. Trying to get the reverse. It's deflected away. It turns into a rugby style play with Jeray Williams. We talked about him having to come up big in the linebacker group for UNLV. And he returns it for a score. It feels so good, man. And that's just come from fighting, man. Hey, I coach tell her that every time. They More people will come if they see your effort, they see your energy, the way you play. If there's a fire in you guys, there's going to make a fire of frenzy in the crowd. All right, coach, we got 30 minutes to go over this ball game. I don't know if that's enough time, but we're going to do our best to break down this thriller over Vanderbilt. Uh, welcome into the Red Zone. I'm Paloma Villacana, joined by head coach of the UNLV football team, Barry Odom. And what an incredible game last night. I mentioned on air last night that this was the first time I've ever seen fans on their feet rocking Allegiant Stadium in the fourth quarter. Um, no doubt a statement win for you and your program. How was last night for you? Well, so excited for our team and, mm -hmm. and for what we're becoming and growing up um, to becoming a complete team. And we had, we had so many errors last night and uh, almost gave the game away and then stayed in the, stayed in the fight, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But uh, credit to our fans. Uh, they helped us win that game. That was huge. And you could feel them uh, in the fourth quarter and, and, and times that we needed it. And it, it made a difference in the game. And uh, excited for our kids, for them to stand in, in times of adversity, stand together, and then come out victorious. It was huge for our team. Yeah, down 17-0 to zero in the first half to come back and land on top. And this one was huge. I heard from the UNLV Rebels earlier this week talking about how resilient this football team is. And no doubt they showed that last night. Let's head out to Allegiant Stadium and check out the highlights. Beautiful moment pregame at Allegiant Stadium last night. The Rebels honored their teammate Ryan Keeler, and that's his sister Julia, who was a part of last night's pregame coin toss. UNLV football dedicating the 2023 season to their teammate who passed away in February. Well, a shaky start again for UNLV starting quarterback Doug Brumfield throwing a pick six in UNLV's opening drive. Vanderbilt jumps on the board first. The Commodores would later kick a field goal and lead 10 to 0 after one. Vandy's rolling early. AJ Swan with time throws a deep ball to the SEC freshman of the week. London Humphreys. Vanderbilt is up 17 to 0 and in control of this ball game. Rebels respond. It's freshman running back Jet Thomas off to the races. His third rushing touchdown at Allegiant Stadium this season. The Rebels trail Vandy 17 to 7. Later in the second quarter, UNLV would lose their top defender, Jackson Woodard, on a targeting call on AJ Swan. Huge loss for the Rebels, but UNLV's defense continues to battle. Momentum swinger right here, AJ Swan loses the ball, and Jare Williams, the Energizer Bunny, picks up the loose ball, and it's a scoop and score for the UNLV defense. Williams, a UNLV captain, off to a strong start in his senior season. Defense keeps rolling in the second quarter, 20 seconds left in the half, and it's a party in the defensive backfield. Jonathan Baldwin picks off Swan, and the Rebels would fight back from being down 17-0 in the first half to take a 20-17 lead at halftime. Both teams would start the second half without their starting quarterbacks. Jaden Maiva coming in for Doug Brumfield, looking comfortable and poised last night in the second half. Maiva, the local guy from Liberty High School, was putting on a show for his city. Maiva scores his first rushing touchdown at UNLV, and the Rebels score 30 unanswered points at Allegiant Stadium. We'll pick it up in the fourth quarter, 2.30 to play. Maiva slings a deep ball to the speed demon, Jacob Day. De Jesus, his first touchdown at UNLV. And De Jesus looks like he wanted to jump in the crowd. He was so fired up. Rebels up 37 to 30. Next drive, Vandy responds. Swan slings it 34 yards to a wide open Quincy Skinner Jr. in the end zone. And it's a shootout at Allegiant Stadium. A nail biter 
But wow, did Jaden Maiva put on a show for his city. Him and Ricky White clicking all night long. Jose Pizano would ice the game with a 36-yard field goal. And UNLV wins one of the most electric college football games ever at Allegiant Stadium. Two straight home wins this season for the Scarlet and Gray. Feels great. I just feel really good that we got the W today. You know, it was a team effort. It wasn't just me. The offensive line, the receivers, everybody. So, yeah. I'll, I'll speak on that. I'm not answering for him, but I want to. Um, <laughs> the city of Vegas is important, and there's a number of recruits, prospects in the city of Vegas, in the 24 class, 25 class, that we can go win and win big with kids from Vegas. And that's where we're recruiting. We're going to start here, and we're branching out from there. But it's huge. And for uh, him to be able to do it in front of his family every single week, uh, there's a lot that goes into that. That's a pretty big deal. Coach, just want to expand on that. You told me before the show you had about 600 recruits and local members at the game last night. I mean, to see Las Vegas come out and support your team and to see a local guy like Jaden Maiva put on a big show for Vegas, how special was that? Well, it's awesome, and it's, it's got to be the lifeblood of our program throughout recruiting. When we started in January, opening the doors to the high school coaches in the city, uh, making sure that every time it's a live recruiting period that the first place we always go is to taking care of Las Vegas schools. Uh, if we do that uh, and build the relationship the right way, then they will see who we are as a program, the people we have, and any goal uh, that a prospect wants to achieve as a college football player, we're going to get done at UNLV. And for, for a kid to be able to play in front of his family every single week, uh, I think there's a lot of strong values that go into that and how we're trying to be direct in recruiting the city. Speaking of a local guy, Jaden Maiva coming in for Doug Brumfield late in the first quarter and really putting on a show in front of his family, his city of Las Vegas. He was efficient through the air and on the ground last night. What did you think about your backup quarterback and maybe how many reps he's had with you guys to come out and feel so comfortable? I think it's so important that, and, and everybody on the roster under, understands it, if you know, we're going to play a number of people and your num you never know when your number is going to get called, that it's time to go in and you have to win a game, whether you're playing quarterback or center or, or boundary corner, whatever the spot is, we're trying to train as many guys as we can to be game ready to play winning football. And it, this is one example of it on how he stepped in. He understands that you know, he, he was a, a snap away uh, from, from being put into that position and, and he has prepared that way uh, since the day we've been here together. Yeah, Maiva was a highlight reel last night at Allegiant Stadium. Redshirt freshman quarterback from Liberty High School really putting on a show and helping the Rebels win last night. Well, coming up next, we're taking a look at the difference makers on defense last night. There's Jure Williams and his boys playing lights out against Vanderbilt. Defense putting on a show last night, hitting some adversity early in the game. We'll discuss the strong defensive performance from the Rebels and what corrections need to be made this upcoming week to get ready for their road trip to El Paso. The Red Zone returns after the break. You're watching the Red Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. Yeah. Trying to get the reverse, it's deflected away and turns into a rugby style play with Jeray Williams. We talked about him having to come up big in a linebacker group for UNLV and he returns it for a score. That's just my coaches having faith in me. They called my blitz, they called me to go, and every time I'm told them I'm gonna get that for you, I'm gonna try my best, my full effort, my full effort and everything, and just run to the ball and look what can happen. Dre Williams always putting on a show, giving it his all every single play at UNLV. No doubt a big game from the senior captain last night, but overall a big game from the defense all over the field. Coach really battling until the final second of last night's game. Just some stats to look at. 23 points off turnovers, three sacks for UNLV defense, 10 TFLs, one interception, and three fumbles recovered last night. Like we were mentioning off camera, the defense came in, put up a fight, came out, put up another fight. I mean, these guys were battling all night long. They were. And the thing that I'm, I'm proud of their efforts and, you know, anytime you can create four takeaways, you've got a great chance to win the game. And we, we responded in a number of times uh, that don't show up in the stat, stat line on 
uh, you know, some coverage where the quarterback initially wanted to go, maybe a little bit of pressure that didn't allow him to step through and follow through on the throw. I, I thought guys gave uh, great effort mm -hmm. um, in, in finding a way to win the game. Um, we also left a lot of plays out there defensively mm -hmm. uh, that caused, you know, with explosive plays that we gave up, made it a lot harder than it needed to be there in the fourth quarter. But uh, so impressed with the way they continue to work and the, the strides that they've made to, to play uh, complementary football together and we're continuing to grow and and we'll keep on getting better. Yeah, we saw a really strong fall camp from your secondary and these guys are only getting better each game. But what corrections could the safeties make learning from this game? Um, you know, a couple missed guys down the stretch of the field and in, in the end zone in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, what corrections do you want to see with your DBs? Yeah, there are a couple times in safeties and corners, but also the underneath cover zone guys. You know, we've got to do a great job of rerouting and get our hands on receivers underneath to affect the timing. Um, there are some things down the field one-on-one -on -one contested balls that the the other team's going to make some plays as well but we've got to continue to, to have great competitive spirit and and eye discipline and all those things mm -hmm. you know when if you make a mistake in the back end everybody in the stadium knows it mm -hmm. right because you see the one-on-one -on -one matchup and um, you know we'll continue to improve I think we've made a lot of improvement from week one until today in those areas and and I think we're just scratching the surface on what this group can be defensively. Do you feel like your defense took a step forward coming off that Michigan loss going up against the Wolverines at the big house. Do you feel like your defense came out stronger this week. Yeah I think we played a lot more aggressive at the line of scrimmage. I yeah. thought our blitz speed was much better um, and and when you can create the takeaways that that will keep you in every game uh, no matter the situation or the score when you can create takeaways you give yourself a chance to win the game. Yeah, definitely a party in the defensive backfield last night. But coming up next, it's the best part of the red zone. We're getting to know UNLV's top special teams coordinator in the country, Coach Shebus, the loudest man on the football field. We're super excited to dive in to the nation's best special teams coordinator, Coach Shebus. The red zone, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Reb Zone. The best part of the show is getting to showcase all the new faces on this UNLV football team. And Coach Odom has put together an elite, experienced coaching staff to help his Rebels succeed here in Vegas. This week, we get to know the man who led the Rebels to be ranked number one in the nation in special teams efficiency just three weeks into the college football season. This week, we had the honor to mic up the loudest man on the football field, the top special teams coordinator in the country, James Shebus. One, two, three, boom, to the field. You There's good? no one in college Where's football like Coach Shebus. Mr. Happy, Mr. Happy, just do your job today. Hey, Loud, Jamie, hilarious, and one of the smile. best special do teams coordinators first. in the nation. Let's go, baby. Let's go, Wins. Let's go make some plays, baby. Let's Coach Shebus is a very, very good special teams right. coach. I've Get never had a special right. teams, go, you know, Let's really coordinator work. like this yeah. in high school or in junior college. We didn't really, I mean, you take special teams seriously but not as serious as you do at this level and with coach Shebus man he's a really he puts in a really good game plan he trains us all well and he really motivates us as well so it, it means a lot to be number one in the country because of how much we work on it and how much we take pride in it good find it find it find it come on go get it Cam I love it Cam baby I love it nice job baby Shebus has spent 22 on, years coaching it, Jeff, D1 football it, with stops it, at Arkansas Ole Miss Memphis and Virginia oh, gosh, Tech it, but he baby. credits his success to where you, it all started for him it. at the junior college level. Let's go it was work. been pretty cool because I started out in junior college or two years uh, school, you know, for about eight years, and I needed that. Uh, number one, to go learn how to coach, go learn how to mow the field, uh, <laughs> do, do the equipment in the weight room. Well, that makes you appreciate. You know, when you do have the opportunity to bump up. For 23 years now, Shebus has helped players succeed on special teams, like UNLV wide receiver Jacob De Jesus, a transfer from Modesto Junior College, has quickly risen this season as a top 10 kick returner in the nation. The great thing is you're not going to be able to block them all sometimes, and he's got the ability to make one, maybe even two miss. But, you know, the thing I see about him out there, he is fearless. Um, meaning he he tries to hit it north and south and uh, maybe being a little smaller is a, an advantage because it's a little harder to hit too so but he's really really quick and uh, 
Uh, he has great confidence and he wants a ball in his hand. Coach Shebus impact on the football field has been tremendous for UNLV and there's still a lot of ball left to play this season. So whether you hear Coach Shebus on the sidelines. Good, nice, good. There you go. Good, tough, good. Or get to see a 96 yard kickoff return from Jacob De Jesus this season. At the end of the day, football is more than a game for these Rebels. I'm not just playing for myself. I'm not just playing for, you know, my goals and dreams. I'm playing for, you know, my daughter and my girl. And, you know, I feel like I, I see it as, you know, I got to do good to, you know, feed my family. So, you know, having them here, it definitely, uh, you know, motivates me a lot more. Um, and just I'm happier here now that they're here with me. So, yeah, definitely. Great to see Jacob's eyes light up talking about his family, his fiance and his daughter now here in Las Vegas with him. No wonder he's having a great season. But coach, want to talk about how important James Shebus is in your program, the history you guys have and, you know, why he's an X factor for your team. Yeah, I've known of Coach Shebus for, uh, you know, the last 25 years. Um, I remember watching him play. He was a great receiver in Arkansas when he, in his playing days. But then we, we got the chance to work together uh, at the University of Memphis. We were there three years together, and I saw how impactful he was, uh, not only with our special teams group, but motivationally within the locker room, within the culture of the, of the organization. Uh, the time that he puts in on giving our kids the opportunity and the tools mm -hmm. then to go play with and be successful, it's unmatched. And I think some of those things are starting to show up on game day. Mm -hmm. uh, he takes tremendous, uh, you know, he takes it, the, the great pride in each unit of the special teams group being an X factor for us. And uh, he takes it personal and just a tremendous coach, uh, a great mentor and a great leader for our for our team team. Well, we've seen nothing but highlights of Jacob De Jesus on offense and on special teams, but a player like Jacob De Jesus, how have you seen him only flourish and grow under Coach Chivas? Yeah, he's got uh, a, an it factor mm -hmm. that he can make plays. As Coach Chivas said, he's got a little bit of fearlessness to him mm -hmm. um, on the way that he plays and he attacks every single practice just like it's game day yeah. and i think jacob's got a, a chip on his shoulder uh, to prove people right or to prove them wrong whichever way you want to look at that but also the guys in the return game they know that we've got a dude back there that if they do their job uh get a chance to take it to the house yeah awesome well more highlights to come this season from jacob de jesus for sure coming up next on the red zone the rebels are headed to el paso texas on saturday Fox 5 is packing our bags with UNLV football for their second road trip of the season. We'll discuss the one in three UTEP minors and how UNLV will look to improve to three and one with Coach Odom on the road this weekend. The Red Zone will be right back. Welcome back to the Reb Zone. It's back to work for the UNLV Rebels getting ready to travel to El Paso, Texas this Saturday for a 6 p.m. kickoff against UTIP. Now, this is the first time in 30 years that the Rebels will play a football game in El Paso. The Miners are coming off a 31 to 10 road loss at Arizona this weekend, falling to one and three overall. And the Rebels are trending in the other direction, coming off a 40 to 37 win over Vanderbilt last night. But coach, I want to talk to you about your experience of maybe coaching in El Paso or being in El Paso, if you want to open up to us about your history there. Yeah, I haven't spent a lot of time. Uh, obviously, uh, I've spent a number of years recruiting in the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, the only time that I've played in El Paso, we were in the Sun Bowl in 2006. So I spent a week there uh, during, during uh, that season at the end of the year in the Sun Bowl. Uh, but that would be about the times that I could say my experience in El Paso. I know that uh, Coach Dimmel, uh, has, has done a great job with their program and you know his background I knew and coached against him when he was at Kansas State he's a tremendous tremendous coach they, they do some things offensively that create problems with formation and different linemen and unbalanced and all the different things that provides an advantage for them they're playing they're playing good football uh, they've had a couple breaks go against them the last couple weeks but mm -hmm. Uh, we'll need to have a really good week of preparation to be ready to go play well. Coming off last night's thriller, what do you expect to see from your team this week? Well, I'm excited to get back around them. And, you know, there's corrections we need to make, but also build on the great things that we did mm -hmm. and understand how if we play really well, all three phases, that we've got a chance 
uh, to play winning football. And uh, the, the consistency on what that looks like, mm -hmm. how important that is, and it all starts with our habits throughout the week. Yeah, both from offensive and defensive players all season long. I've heard about the consistency they want to see on both sides of the ball. Well, if you want to come to the next home game at UNLV, you don't want to miss UNLV's next home game. Saturday night was electric at Allegiant Stadium, and Barry Odom wants to see all of Las Vegas come out for the Ninth Island showdown between Hawaii and UNLV. So buy your tickets now for next Saturday's home game at Allegiant Stadium for a 1 p.m. kickoff. The Rebels look to recapture the Golden Pineapple and keep the trophy here in the 702. Coach, I just want to finish the show with your thoughts at Allegiant Stadium and really creating that home field advantage you were talking about. Yeah, it's so important for us and so yeah. important for our program to take the next step. And, you know, it's my vision and dream and and our and our team and our program is is to sell that thing out yeah. and if we do that and and keep working towards that uh, this this program will explode. Yeah, it was definitely a special night last night at Allegiant Stadium. Hope to see everyone there next Saturday, and we'll be on the road with the Rebels this weekend in El Paso. Have a great Sunday night. We'll see you next Sunday on the Reb Zone.